please go ahead while you wait for the presentation to start and answer our very simple yes or no poll. Look at those numbers coming in, very exciting. And we'll let the poll go for a little bit longer. And I would like to introduce to you this morning our presenter, Don Schachtel. Don is an amateur botanist who lives in Leavenworth. He was the past chapter chair of the Wenatchee Valley chapter and actually the committee chair for our 2016 study weekend in the Leavenworth area. He has served as WM, WMPS president on our state board of directors and is currently serving as treasurer and fundraising chair. Thank you, Don. In 2017, Don helped organize a project to compile the Washington Native Plant Society plant lists into an online database. The plant lists have been in production for many, many years, and Don will tell you more about those. The project was funded with a grant from the Garno Nyko Family Foundation in Seattle and from donations made by WMPS chapters. And I will let Don give you the results of the pro the, that funding, um, but I'm going to end our poll at this time. And I'm going to share the results. And there you have it. Um, welcome members this morning and also new people to WMPS. Take it away, Don Schachtel. Right. Well, th well, thanks a lot, Denise. And, you know, we really appreciate all the hard work you put into making these uh, webinars work. They've been very well attended. And, and thanks, everybody, for joining us on, on this nice morning. And uh, we got that, the results of the poll. About 56% of the people have used plant lists. The rest have not. So uh, just to tell you a what the goal today of our presentation is for everyone to learn the the, how to use the plant list, how to access them, and how to use them to supercharge your learning for plants. And so to start with, uh, let me ask you a question. You just write this down on a piece of paper. Is uh, how many plant species do you think there are in the state of Washington? So say, uh, talking about native plants as well as uh, weeds that have grown in, not ornamental plants. But just think for a minute, if you had to pick a number, round number, you know, uh, don't worry about being precise because there probably isn't a precise answer. What would you think? And so, you know, if I, the number I, I picked for to answer this question, because I know you'd want to know, is uh, in the Florida of the Pacific Northwest New Edition, they've listed 4,800 species of, of plants. And that's a lot. And so you, it kind of makes you realize why identifying plants can be kind of difficult. But let me ask you this uh, second question then on one of your hikes. How many might you see? You might picture, you know, some of you might say, well, I, I could only find 10, but think about all the ones that are there that, uh, that you might see. And maybe, a, maybe it's 50 to 100 on a, on a typical hike. And you might have a, uh, you know, if you go through a lot of diverse habitats, you'd see more. If you're in a small area that's pretty much the same, you might see less. But one of the, the benefits of plant lists is they use using the process of elimination, it helps you identify things easier. So let me give you an example. Uh, if you've ever been up the North Fork Tianaway River Road, there's the Iron Peak Trail, which is a popular, popular destination that the whole area is. And uh, Art Kruckerberg, founder of WNPS, in fact, he identified an area near there, the El Dorado Natural Area, which is a is really adjoins and, and actually this trail goes on part of that area. And uh, there, there's a plant list for it. And uh, say if you were on that trail and you saw this plant and you'd look at that and say, you know, obviously in a dry habitat 
and you'd say, well, I don't know what it is, but it looks like a violet to me. And so you'd say, well, how do I know which violet it was? Well, you could look in your, your field guide and you, you might find, depending on how detailed your field guide was, you might find 10 to, to 20 violets in it. Uh, or uh, in my case here, I, what I did is I, uh, is I looked on the plant list and said uh, on my plant list for Iron Peak Trail, there's list two violets. And so uh, I've gone from, uh, if I look at the, uh, the Burke Museum website, the image gallery, which is a terrific resource, and I put the, the link uh, to it on the bottom or the URL, uh, I found it this morning. Uh, I just Googled uh, Burke Herbarium and this image gallery pops up if you, you don't want to copy the, the, the whole link. Uh, and this is a great site because it lists probably most of the plants found in Washington state. And so I, I went there and I said, well, let me look up and see what these violets look like. And they have 24 violets. They have yellow, white ones, yellow ones, and purple ones, and mixed colored ones too, of course. And so uh, Viola glabella, uh, the common name pioneer violet, you may also know it as stream violet or wood violet, woods violet. Uh, you look at it and you say, you know, it looks similar, but not quite. You look at the habitat for that one, it's a moister kind of habitat. You can look at the leaves even, look a little bit greener. So let's look at the other one on the list. That's uh, Viola purpurea. And you look at it and say, wow, that's, that's it. And you see the pictures even in a, a drier habitat. And you notice the, that website also has, has range maps uh, in it. And you can see the area we're in. I'm not sure if you can see my cursors right here on the county line between Kittitas County and, and Chelan County. So uh, that's just one of over 700 plant lists. They are uh, found, uh, we've got them from all over the state and the, uh, you find them from the WNPS website, which I hope uh, most of you have found. And what I'm gonna do is just show you some screenshots from the website and then we're gonna go actually go live and show you uh, how to access a, a plant list and also how to, um, how to edit a list and, uh, and create your own list if you're interested. And a little bit more about the, this project is plant lists, you know, WNPS is, is I think now 44 years old. And for all those years, people have been making plant lists or members have been making plant lists. It might be from a field trip, it could be from a study weekend. And, <coughs> excuse me, they, uh, started as uh, paper copies, uh, hand typed, and uh, then Don Kanoki uh, was a fellow in our society, a great amateur botanist uh, who did all kinds of terrific things. In fact, the revised issue of Florida Pacific Northwest is, is, is dedicated to Don, and he uh, made, he was the the point person for Plantless, and he built a database of his own and then use that to generate plant lists that people sent him. And then we posted them online as either a PDF or a Word document. Uh, well, as Don got older and he passed away a few years ago, uh, before that time, several of us got asking, well, what are we gonna do once Don's no longer able to do these plant lists? And around that time also, David Giblin at the University of Washington Herbarium had the idea that it would be great to have our plant lists connected to the Washington Flora Checklist. So as scientific names change, which, which as many of you know, they do, uh, the list names could get updated. And not only that, it could have features that more people could create lists and people could add to lists. Whereas before being a manual process, it was difficult. Whereas now you could, with our new plan list system, you can have a list and then, uh, and then uh, somebody can go out and uh, I'll show you, that's one of our, our demos. So someone can go out, find a new, few new species and add them easily to it. So uh, let's just give you another example about a, a trip uh, that you might take. So you, say you watched uh, Donovan Tracy's presentation yesterday about Mount Rainier and our wildflowers in Mount Rainier. And you said, gosh, I gotta go there. And you found, you look for lists, uh, for that area and one you found was for Spray Park which is in the northwest corner of the park and say so you're up there and you saw this flower 
This is one of our uh, calendar photos uh, by, by Julia Ben. This flower, it looks big here, but it's, it's maybe those little stems of the flowers are maybe two inches tall. And you see those little tiny succulent leaves. And you could tell by where you are, this is an, alpi an alpine plant. So probably up about 6,000 feet of elevation or higher and with Mount Rainier in the background. So uh, you look at that and you say, gosh, that's a new plant for me. I don't know what it is, but you know, when I look at it, it, it kind of looks like a saxifrage to me. And so uh, you can, we'll look on a plant list and there's a number of saxifrage family plants and a few actually with the name saxifrage. And so again, I could go to that Burke Museum website and look up these different ones and find that it's, uh, it's Alpine saxifrage, Tolmy saxifrage is another name, or the scientific name, Micranthus tolmii. Now, not long ago, it was known as saxifraga tolmii. And so one of the beauties of this new website is it, uh, it, it, it will update these names automatically as they change. So let's show you now, uh, in fact, you know what I'd like to do right now and see if I can do this without, uh, without losing my place here. So I'm gonna end this show and what I'd like to show you is what a plant list looks like. And for those of you who haven't used them before, and this is one, uh, this is for near where I live in Leavenworth uh, for the Icicle Creek Trail. And uh, this one with uh, the one my wife and I did uh, last October, just a one day trip and we identified 53 species. And we, we did this, we didn't go planning to make a plant list, but I was gonna do this presentation for our chapter, why well, I did it in January. And I thought this would be a great demonstration. And so uh, what a plant list is, it's basically three columns, although it can be printed in different formats, where you have the uh, family, the accepted name or the scientific name, and then the common name. And so this one, the way I've printed it, it divides by a family. So here's ferns and here's... Um, 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 Dodd. Yes. Denise. You need to reshare your screen so folks can see the list. Well, because well, right you. now we see your PowerPoint presentation. Oh, really? Thank you. That's funny. Hang on one second. So go to the share screen icon and... Choose the window the plant list is in. Oh, I see. Yeah, except it says stop share, though. It's okay. You, you can stop share and reshare, and then oh, come right back. Well, yeah. It's all right. How's that? There it is. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. There we go. Thank you for pointing that out. So, um, so here's the Ice Creek Trail near Leavenworth, uh, done uh, October 6, 2019, and uh, 53 species. And it's got just a little bit of information about it. And then the list, now this is where, where you started wondering what he was talking about. So there's families, accepted names, and, and common names. And if we look at these ferns, you'll notice that, uh, that the accepted names, one of them has a, in parentheses, a, a, a name we used to know, deer fern, and unfortunately I can't pronounce these very well. Uh, and so let me find one I can pronounce here. Let's see if we can. Oh, here we go. No, that's a bad one. The, I want to find. So I'm down in the in the die cots here. Here we go. So uh, I don't know if you know, fool's huckleberry was used to be known as Menzisi ferrignia, and now it's known as Rhododendron menziesii. So that's one of the beauties of this is it corrects it. So depending on what uh, book you have, it might be listed as either, either species, or you may choose to call it Fool's Huckleberry. So I just wanted to give you just a quick look on what one looks like. We're gonna come back to this one and look at it. And now that I know how to do this, so let's go back to um, our presentation. And we'll go okay so so here we are uh, the question is where where can you find these WNPS plant lists and just do a quick few quick screenshots and then we're gonna go we'll do it live and what I want to encourage everybody to do is after this uh, presentation 
is go in and find a plant list for an area you're familiar with, familiar with and you'll see the different downloading options and you can print it if you want or you could just look at it online. But that will kind of cement what we talked about today in your mind. So uh, if you go to WMPS.org, and this is our homepage. This is a homepage uh, a few months ago, so it doesn't look like that today. But you'll see across the top, a uh, what I've circled here in red is a, a heading called plants. And that uh, makes a drop-down list. And from that drop-down list, click plant lists. And then that brings you to the plant list homepage. And so you'll see now uh, with this, we've got 737 plant lists now uh, that, are, that are on our, on our, in our database. And so when you get there, if you want to find, find a plant list, a couple ways to do it. Uh, one way is by county. And uh, this is the way I usually go in is there's the county map and you can click on the county where your plant list is and, and find it. And there's also a list of counties which shows you the number of plant lists in each county. And I might point out that the, it's, it's not a race by any means, but the county with the most, Kittitas County with 82 plant lists, that's where Don Kenoki lived. And he was a, a great plant lister. And a lot of the ones in, if you look in Kitsap County, Chelan County, and a lot of other places, Don Kenoki was a contributor, uh, if not the list maker. But you see lots of other ones. Uh, King County has a lot in um, uh, 68, uh, Bellingham area, uh, Whatcom County, 78, and uh, it makes us look like slackers in Chelan County with only 54, but uh, there are a lot of great plant lists available there. And uh, another feature is you can find it on a map, and so this is an uh, area around Leavenworth where I live, and all those little, uh, little marks or little map tags are places with plant lists. And that one we were just looking at, if you can see my cursor, is this one right here. And we'll get a look at that again shortly. So and the information you'll find on the plant list, like we, we talked about uh, that currently accepted scientific name and the former scientific name or synonyms, if there was one, some, some do, some don't. A common name, which may not be the common name you're used to, but there'd be one, one common name. And then a family name, which would be the scientific name. And again, the, one of the really ben real benefits of this database is those names are updated when they're revised. And that will be, that's an, uh, name revisions have been going on for years and years and, and will continue. So that's what is a, a great feature of this. So uh, again, I promised you we'd talk about how to supercharge your ID skills. So here's some things I suggest on how to use these plan lists, because that's the plan lists have a lot of ways you can use them or a lot of, of, of great things that you can do with them. But our focus today is how to use them to get better at identifying plants. So here's what I suggest to people is before you go on a trail, find the plant list and, and print it and then take a look at it so you kind of know what to expect and look for plants that you don't know, that you've never seen, or maybe you would like, you've heard of and would like to see or are similar to a species you know. Look them up either with that in a, in a guidebook or in a uh, on the Brook Museum website, or I'll show you a minute, the, uh, the Washington Wildflowers app is, is popular with people. And that way, when you go, you kind of have an idea of what to look for. And then take that list with you, and you could use it as a checklist if you want to check off what you see, and also as an identification aid, as I was showing with the violets or the saxifrage. And that doesn't mean you have to walk and check off everything. It's maybe when you take a break, you sit down and you say, hey, what, what have we seen or what haven't we seen? And it's also terrific for comparing, say if you look on the list and you see two similar species and you say, well, what is the difference between them? You can then either in advance or while you're there, uh, take a look and see what's different about them. Sometimes the differences are subtle and sometimes they're, they're more obvious. And also note any species that aren't on the list. And some lists are more complete than others. For example, that Icicle Ridge list, that was one trip in October. And I'm sure there's a lot of things if you went you know, in another month that you'd see that, that we didn't see then. And uh, then when you get home, as review the list. And what I suggest to people is set it somewhere where you sit often, say if you're watching television or 
or reading or a dining table even, and then review that list occasionally and remind yourself of what those names are and what they look like. Plus, you can look up plants that you saw that you weren't sure about. And also, if you did find some new plants or saw something that you think might be an error, you can contact the, the author of that list and, and make that suggestion to, to add them. And we'll talk a little bit about that here in a minute. So uh, what I recommend to people is, uh, so say you, you saw some new things, you could look at the list contributor and, and email them if it's somebody you know, or, uh, or find out someone, someone will, will have their email address probably in your chapter if you're a WNPS member. And say, hey, I was on, on that trip uh, using your list and I identified uh, two plants that aren't on it. Would you like to add them? And depending on, um, who the contributor is and who you are, they might say, like if Walter Furtick was on the call today, he emails me and says, hey, I saw these three plants that are on your list. I'd say, oh, I'll add them, because you know, Walter is a state ENR botanist. Whereas if it's somebody I didn't know, I might say, can you, or something that's a little more obscure, I might say, hey, can you send me a picture of it? Because I'd, I'd like to see that for myself. And so the contributor may say, yeah, uh, I'll add it. Or they might say, hey, why don't you become a contributor on my list? For example, here, uh, one of the lists I have right close to our house is the Icicle Ridge Trail. And one of our friends in our WNPS chapter, Ann Fink, uh, she travels that a lot. And so I added her as a contributor. And so she can add directly to the list. So I wanted to show you one other app that's uh, a lot of people like and it's popular. And let's say we're back up at Mount Rainier and we see this, uh, this yellow flower here. And the Washington Wildflower app has a key in it, which is kind of slick. And they're searched by characteristics page. And you look at the growth, it's a, um, uh, a wildflower as opposed to a tree or a vine. It's, it's yellow. It was July when we saw it. It was in this region of, well, actually, I said central Washington, I guess Mount Rainier would actually be over here, but it's, it would be in, in central Washington too. Habitat was high in the mountains and number of petals uh, symmetrical with, with six. So uh, then you would click those in and it would tell you what you saw was a glacier lily or it's Erythronium grandiflorum would be the scientific name. Other names, yellow avalanche lily, yellow fawn lily. It's a great app, a lot of people like it. Uh, for, it runs on a smartphone or a tablet. And if you're interested in that, you could Google, of course, Washington Wildflowers, or it's at highcountryapps.com. And that was a great collaboration between High Country Apps and uh, Mark Turner, who's a great photographer and on our uh, uh, guidebook author, or field guide author, and also on our state board, and, uh, and uh, David Goodwin at the University of Washington Herbarium. So it's a great, a great thing if you're, you like to use a smartphone. What's great, you know, with your smartphone, you're carrying it for photographs anyways, or your GPS, and it saves you carrying a lot of guidebooks. So it's, it's a nice app. I think it's only $10. Well, let's talk here uh, about how to create a plant list and uh, do this very briefly, and then we'll, we'll, we'll look at it online. And again, uh, to create a plant list, you, uh, you need to be a WNPS member, which is, it's easy to join, of course. And uh, it gives you the flexibility to be a contributor to, to, be, to edit lists as well as to create your own list. So here's an example of what you, uh, steps you might use. One is you visit the area of interest. It might be a, a park. Uh, it might be a trail. Uh, it could be a, a natural area. Uh, if you're a consultant, it could be uh, an area that you're doing a plant inventory in, a lot of different ways. And you could use a nearby plant list as a starting point, or you can create your own and list what you see. And then type up the list. This is the way I do it, and there's, there's other ways. But uh, type up the list in Word, in, uh, in uh, a spreadsheet, however you like to do it, as a text file even. And you don't need to use the currently accepted name, but it has to be by scientific name. That's the way it's set up. And your list can be in any order, which is really nice because uh, you don't have to try to organize. You can just do a brainstorm, really, what, what you see. And then you can go in the database. Uh, there's a create a new list uh, button. And then you enter what they call metadata, which is description of the area, elevation, uh, how to find it, other, other information. Uh, and then you can cut and paste your list right into the form. And then correct your spelling and, and edit names as needed. And, Typically, as, 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 
You know, I'm a decent speller of these things. Typically, though, I always make mistakes, and it tells you, which is really nice. And then decide if you want your list to be public. And the lists that are you see on the website, those are ones that people have, have designated as public. There's also a number of private lists, which again could be, a, say, if you're uh, dealing with a, a, a ecological consultant dealing with a sensitive area, you might want to keep your list private, but you still want to have the, the the current names. Or it might be you could do one for your uh, your uh, yard uh, and, and keep it private if you wanted. Uh, the public, uh, I've started doing more lists public, even if they may not be complete, because I want, want people to add to it. So let's, let me show you an example of uh, the Icicle Creek Trail, which is that list I, I showed you earlier. And again, uh, this list, had we intended to, to make a plant list, I would have, um, would have taken a picture of us at the trailhead, right? But I didn't. So here's where it is. Leavenworth is, is off the screen to the right, and I think it's about 15 miles from Leavenworth up the Icicle Creek Trailhead to uh, this one here, which is at the end of the road. And that leads up to all kinds of uh, amazing places. Uh, this trade part of the trail we went on is, is relatively, uh, relatively, uh, I think it's like 400 feet of, or 200 feet of elevation meaning in the in forest. And compare that to down here at Icicle Gorge, the next plant list down, there's 188 species on that list. That's list that lots of people have contributed to. This one we found 53. So the way we did it is we got home and we brainstormed a list. And what I did is I just put down whatever, ever, any name I could come up with and got out some of my books to, uh, to help me out. And you see, I got the cat to help me out. And if any of you have a cat, you know, you need multiple books because the cat will invariably choose one of your books to lay on. In this case, he's on the floor of the Pacific Northwest. But here's what my list looked like. And again, it's just on a piece of paper. Uh, we, when we got home, we just sat down and thought about all the, the things we saw. And then uh, some of them I knew the scientific names of, others you can see I didn't, that's what the books were for. And then I, I typed them up. And here's, this is just in Word and, and typed up the lists. And, uh, and then uh, opened up the uh, plant list database. Uh, click create a list and then pasted this list in and that, that got the list that you see. So let's do a, a little demonstration of, of how to use it. And so what I'm going to do is uh, go back to sharing screen. I should say, but we got Ron Balkeman um, is, is on the line as a panelist. And when we have questions and answers at the end, Ron's agreed to join us. He's our plant list manager and uh, he'll be able to answer all the questions that I can't answer. So I wanted to go to um, where did I want? Yeah, I'm sorry about this. I wanted to go to And Denise, tell me if I've got, if you've got the, the WNPS homepage on here. Yes, Todd, we have the website. Thank you very much. All right. So uh, again, so here's the WNPS website as it looks today. And so I go to plants and plant lists. And here's the page you saw. And there's our, our uh, index there. And here's... Uh, I'll click on Chelan County, which is where that trail is. And here's all the trails in Chelan County. I don't want you to get dizzy here, but I'm gonna scroll down to the eyes. And here's Icicle Creek Trail with 53 species. And here's what it looks like when you see it online. And one of the things that you can do here is, um, I'm gonna move, I think I can move us, I'm gonna move us over here. I don't know if that was just on my screen, but I hope you can see this section here, which is how to download a plant list. And uh, you can see you can do it as a PDF, as a Word document, or as a uh, tab delimited text file. As a uh, Word document, that would be great if you were uh, building a plant list into a report, for example. That's a, a great way to do it, or if you wanted to uh, condense it possibly or, or do a little more work with it. 
And then you have three choices of layout. One's in the three column format, which is the default. That's what I showed you. You can also do a four column list and you can do it uh, indented by family and scientific name, which is great if you're trying to learn family names. And you could sort it by family or scientific name. Plant list used to be uh, listed all sorted by scientific name by genus, and you could still sort it that way. And uh, there are just advantages and disadvantages, of course, by sort how you sort it, but you can do it either way. And you have choices, you can show the synonyms or not, and you can also um, show uh, the accepted names or not. And so you can click uh, download, and you'll get the um, here it is over here. And then that's the list like I showed you. So I, I, I may have make sure I didn't get myself into a pickle here. Okay, so let me go back. To where I Okay, here, that, this will work, sorry. Okay, here we are. So uh, Denise, again, if you're not looking at the, if we're not looking at the plant species list, let me know. We still so one of the see features, you. You say, you say we are? We are not, you need to Thanks, share thank you. your screen. Thank Don't you very much. Don't forget the blue button. So um, what I wanna show you now is to uh, manage plant lists is I can click on this and you can see here the icon for create a new plant list. And this is again, because I, I'm a contributor. So Don't I'll show you at the end how to, to, to become a contributor, contributor. The other thing I wanted to show you here is how to add a species. So again, because I have a contributor to the list, I can do this. So to add species. Don't you need to reshare your screen. Oh, I, you, I did, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said it was, hang on. Click the blue share button. Well, you know, Denise, I, I'm, having a, I'm gonna go back to the presentation because I'm having a little trouble and then I will figure out what's not working here. Move me back. Okay, so here's, uh, you know, we'll go back when we have questions, we'll, we'll have, we all have time, I'll figure out what I'm doing wrong here. So, uh, to get a plant list account to be able to do the things I was showing you, uh, you need to be a member of Washington Native Plant Society. And again, that's easy to do. You can join at the, if you're not a member already, you can join at the WNPS website. And then Ron Bachelman is our uh, plant list manager. And you can send Ron an email, email to plantlists at wnps.org and put in the subject line, put uh, plant lists. And then Ron will send you uh, a temporary password and some instructions to get you started. And one thing I wanted to mention is there is a uh, detailed contributors guide that uh, Ben Legler, who developed the database, now at the University of Idaho, um, developed this terrific contributors guide that tells you all about how to use the uh, how to use the uh, database and all those different fields. So with that, what I'm, I'm thinking is let's go to questions and uh, and I will try to get back to the to the um, the uh, plantless database and get that on the screen. So, uh, so Denise, let us know if we have questions while I figure out how to do this. Thank you, Don. Uh, this question will actually likely be a good thing to demonstrate, but it's from Robert Nuremberg. The points on the map that you showed as having plant lists, is there a good geographical description of where those points are? For example, by trail name, longitude, latitude, or other identifier. And here's Ron Bachelman, who has joined us. Good morning, Ron. Good morning. Everybody can see you. So welcome. I know, that's, that's why I haven't been on before. Uh-huh. 
Um, so Don will shortly be sharing his screen with us. He's running into some switch out change of screen challenges. Um, so you might be able to answer a question. Now the points on the map that showed as having plant lists, is there a good geographical description of where those points are? For example, by trail name, longitude, latitude, or other identifier? Uh, did you want me to answer that question? Yeah, why don't you go ahead, Ron, while I figure out what I'm doing wrong here. I would say it varies by what name was used for the list, but uh, in terms of what shows up if you start from the county, and, and so it relates to the metadata that's included. If the trail name is listed anywhere in the metadata, you could do a search rather than going to the map or to the list, county list. You could search for that particular trail name or trail number, and if it is in the metadata, the database should uh, return some hits for it. Does that make sense? This is Robert Nuremberg that's asking the question, and perhaps we can follow up with him later on today. Yeah, and um, I have, uh, if I can get to, here we go. Okay, uh, can you see this now, Denise? Yes, you can see the website. All right, so I think I can, I think I can answer this question. I'm sorry that I did get to switching, uh, switching things here. So let's do, uh, get back to plant lists. And okay, I guess the question we talked about finding it on a map. And so this map is zoomable. And so if I make it bigger, uh, you can get, and we'll go, uh, I was looking at this uh, in Seattle, there is a Schmitz Park is one of the lists. And that was where, right where I used to live in West Seattle. And so here's Schmitz Park here in, in West Seattle. And so you can zoom in pretty close. And so that's one way, and they do have uh, the, they do have uh, uh, latitude and longitude associated with them. So I hope that answers your question. And here you can get right to uh, right to where it is. So, uh, and now I'm going to go back to. Uh, Don, why don't you try uh, searching the plant list tab on on your? Yeah. Screen. Okay. Oh, okay, right. So if I wanted to uh, find, uh, well, let's take Schmitz Park. And we'll search. And there it is. Well, I want to go back to uh, the one that had to add a, a how to add a, a something to the list. So I'm going to go back to um, where I was. I'm not getting off the screen now. So back to the Iscope Creek Trail. And again, so I'm a contributor on this, so I can do this. I can go to Add Species and say, I see there's a couple I want to add. This is the field that you would go to if you had to, um, if you had to, uh, if you wanted to paste in a list. So let's say I went and I saw, uh, say I went early and I see uh, Western Spring Beauty, that's Claytonia lanceolata. And I saw, um, uh, say another set, say I saw Carex hoodii, hood sedge. I picked these two because they're, I can spell them, right? There's, I had another idea of one that wasn't easily spelled. So I click save. And here it, it, it uh, identifies them. And the Claytonia lanceolata got a flag, and that flag says it's an ambiguous name, name with, was more broadly circumscribed in the past, has since been split into more accepted taxa. And I'm going to leave it this way for now. And I say close. And then when I go down to my list, we'll look for the sedge first and the monocot. So here's hood sedge is now added to the list. And then the uh, Claytonia lanceolata is there. Right. How about, let's we'll go back for some more questions, but I definitely wanted to. Don, Don, why don't you try entering, adding that one that you weren't sure how to spell? Okay. 
All right, let's go back to uh, add species. I'll just do a single name. And you're thinking, why don't I just spell it wrong, is what you're saying. I'll, just, I'll spell it wrong. So let's say I saw a, a shrubby penstemon. Uh, yeah, so I will we'll click save. And it's going to tell me I, that they can't find it. Now, I don't know where that just went, but uh, <laughs> we'll try it again. But anyway, so there's a flag that tells you when something's not spelled right. And so uh, and I think you have to move your cursor outside of the box and click. Don't don't click save. Oh, don't click save. Sorry. So this one I got, I spelled it right there. Yeah. Okay. And and it tells it gives you the common name, and then that would add it. So this is going to add it to the list. And I'll go back. I'm, I'm pretty sure all those plants are there. But uh, what's nice, I want to show you a trick uh, that Ron had showed me on spelling. And uh, one thing I could do, say if I want to add a species, and I'm going to add, say it's a single name, and say I can't remember what uh, how to spell something. I can go to this Burke Museum site, and I can go, say it was the, the uh, Say it's a Calypso orchid, which is, uh, I can't remember the genus for that one. Let me think of what I can remember the genus for. Uh, well, it's Calypso, isn't it? Calypso bulboso, right? C. Scientific name starts with a C. Let's go yeah. to the scientific name. Well, I'm going to say, I can't say I couldn't remember that. I'm going to look up family. Okay. And I'll go over to the orchids. It says there's 42 orchids, and there it is right there. And so what I can do here is I can, can, uh, can copy it. And then I can go to our list and I can paste it in. And that's a really slick way to do it. And now, it, that, now that's added. So there's just a couple, just a couple quick things on adding to a list. So how about some other questions? So Robert Nuremberg has built on his question about the metadata, and he says, yes, makes sense, but does metadata entry enforce the entry of detailed data? Uh, there's two ways to enter uh, metadata, and we'll look at, say on this one, say if I want to edit metadata. Um, here's all the things we can do. There's a, you see here it says show basic forms. So there's, there's basic form, or there's a bunch of other things you can do. And this one, it's got uh, the title, of course, that's required, general descriptions required. But it's got ownership, uh, any access restrictions, directions. The, the permits, fields with permits. asterisks are the ones that are re required. That's your minimum. Yeah, but there's a, a lot of other data too. Yeah, with the stars here. We love more metadata whenever possible. Yeah. Yeah, and then here's the latitude and longitude. And the way with the map, you know, how you, I was showing how you could zoom in to find it. To put your location in, you could zoom in and, and get really close. How about other questions? So we have a couple folks with their hands raised. I think they'd like to ask their questions. So I'm going to first call uh, Linda Sheehan. Uh, Linda, you um, are able to ask your question. Oh, okay. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, is there any way <clears throat> that we can find out what time of year these um, these observations were made, or the the uh, plant list uh, observations? Yeah. Well, well, first, hi, Linda. How are you doing? And, and so, uh, yeah. So the plant list, like this particular one, was done on a particular on a given date, and so that shows up. The uh, other list might be a compilation. They might be done at lots of different dates. And what that doesn't show is individual observations. In fact, one of the things that we talked about at one time was expanding the database so it would actually, you'd put in what you saw on a given date and that would be retrievable. And right, right now, we don't have that capability. But you can look, a lot of times it will say the date that the 
if it's just a couple of visits, it might have those particular dates. I'd encourage those people working on lists to include all the dates that they might have been there to record plants so that those using the list have an idea. How about some more questions? And I will say that a lot of the old lists don't necessarily have that. <laughs> Our next raised hand is Mary Barr. And Mary, I'm having trouble unmuting you. Can you unmute yourself? I don't think Mary has a mic. Mary, perhaps you could type your question into the chat or the Q&A. And let's see, uh, Van Bobbitt's asking a question. Good morning, Van. On the Smith's Park plant list, the entry Sequoia Semperverans has a P in front of the genus. What does the P signify? Yeah, you know, Van, hi, hi, by the way, Van's our president of WNPS and, and one of the contributors on the Schmitz Park plant list. I saw that too when I opened it this morning and, and I don't know, Ron, do you know what a P would stand for? Uh, I'm running a blank on it, but can you scroll your list down a little bit? They have a key near the top of what some yeah. of those. Um, oh, I know what it is. I think P stands for planted. Oh, that would make sense. Right. It, was a, it was a redwood or a sequoia probably, yeah. Very good. And I think Mary has a mic now. Mary, can you hear me? Do you have a question today? Oh, I was wondering about um, access to the, the, the previous webinar. Oh, we will answer that. We'll answer those questions at the end. Thank you. Mary, I believe Mary is in Mexico, so she's got some bandwidth. Thanks. Okay, any more questions? Let's check the chat. Well, again, uh, I would encourage everybody to uh, try, uh, go to the WNPS website and, and check out a list that's familiar to you. And if you have an area you like to go and it doesn't have a list, uh, I wanna encourage you to start making one. And it's a great way to learn and uh, you could get your uh, friends to go with you and help you identify it. It's a great, great project. Don, I'd like to add to that a little bit. Um, we have a lot of old lists that need someone to become their custodians. <laughs> so if you have uh, an area that you hike frequently, it'd be great if you could check to see if there is a list for it. And if you are familiar with the flora and you see a contributor like Don Kanoki, for example, who's no longer with us as, as the author and the only contributor, why nobody's taking care of that list. And we'd love someone to step forward and, and kind of help improve the list. And also adding to lists or taking over a, an existing list might be an easier way to kind of slide into the lists generally rather than starting from scratch. Um, all you need to do in a case like that is just contact me and say you'd like to be added as a contributor and and uh, I'll take care of it for you. Great, good point, Ron, thanks. Tim Schoenfelder has a question. Do you need to get a password just to download a plant list? Yeah, well, hi, Tim, how are, how are you doing? Uh, the answer is no. The, uh, one of the great things about our, our database is they are open to everybody. So people from all over the country can, can download a list. You only need the password to uh, contribute to a list, to edit one or, or create a new list. And Roger Brewer asks, can lists be for sites, not just trails? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, for, uh, there are some lists we have that, uh, like Schmitz Park, for example, is, uh, I don't know how many acres, but it's uh, walkable in, in 10 minutes. Uh, it can be a trail, it could be, as I mentioned, you could have a private list for your own yard, you want to catalog the native plants in your yard. Uh, it could be uh, a park. So yeah, you can really, in your, that metadata, you would just describe what area your list covers. 
Lynn Graff says, I use iNaturalist and understand that the plant lists can be imported. Who can describe the best way to do this? Well, uh, I, uh, hi, Lynn. How are you doing? Lynn's an old friend. Uh, yeah, it'd be someone whose name's not Don Shackdall. Ron, do you know the answer to that? I do not. I'm not uh, currently using iNaturalist, so I'm, I can't speak to that question. Yeah. So, yeah. We'll find I, out, Lynn. We'll find out the answer, and perhaps that's a future article in one of our publications. Thank you for your question. A, might be an addition or uh, a comment that we had an article in the last issue of Douglasia about using iNaturalist, so it might be the answers there. Yes. Yeah. And, and Tim has a follow-up question. Um, do you have any plant lists for any hikes in Oregon? No, we don't, because that's right, call Tim, I think you live in La Grande, don't you? So uh, 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 we don't. Yeah, this is strictly the state of Washington. And, uh, but I'm not sure if the Oregon Native Plant Society has, has, has plant lists, they might. I will say we do have a few lists for maybe the Columbia Gorge area or down in that area. There are a few Oregon lists that are not accessible. Well, I, don't, I don't know if they're, they might be accessible through the search function, uh, they wouldn't be through the map or otherwise, but we do have a few lists that are from Northern Oregon, I guess. John Haskins asks, in case there are ever resources for new features, I have one for the list. It would be really useful to be able to bulk upload comments. I have a couple largest, largish, lists where it would be nice to include range and habitat information. Can you speak to that? Yeah, that's, that's a great, a great thing. And we're, we're, we have ideas for, for expansion and that, that is terrific because my uh, trail right near our house that uh, I created a list for on my, my own list before I imported it, I would have like the elevation I saw the plant or uh, any landmarks to find it again. Uh, I think what his question is speaking to is the, you know, because it's on a list, it could be common throughout the entire area, or there could be one plant. So yeah, there's all kinds of information like that that would be really interesting. And that would be, as, as we uh, expand someday, that's something we can consider. I, and, and the batch upload would be a nice way to do it. I would uh, at least advise folks that my experience with that is if you add a comment, it shows up on your list and your list becomes, um, it, it'd be nice if it was something that you saw just when you clicked on it when you were online, but it also shows up on your printed list as well. So your list can become longer and longer if you add a lot of comments. Okay, and Julie Kane asks, what would be really wonderful would be a link to a picture. Is there any move to do that in the future? Yeah, you know, that is another thing we've talked about. That would be really slick, wouldn't it? If you could just uh, click on it and then there'd be the picture. So yeah, that's, uh, that would be nice. And that's uh, one of our, on our wish list. In fact, my wish list was to do a link directly to the Herbarium Image Gallery. So we could take you straight to that page and you could look at as many photos as you wanted as were available for the species, as well as the other information. Right. But that's on the wish list. <laughs> And Lionel Reynolds asks, do any of the lists include non-native or invasives that are common to the area? They, they do. In fact, the one I showed, uh, we didn't include any uh, in, introduced species, but they are on there and, and, and they are uh, flagged with an asterisk, so you can tell which ones are introduced. And it's a nice feature. And I, like I said, I just the one I chose uh, did, not, did not show that. But yeah, if you look at some of the lists, for popular trails, you'll probably see a number of, of weeds or other introduced species. If you look at the key symbols that uh, is on is on Don's screen, you'll see the very first one is is how introduced species are uh, indicated on the list. I might point out too a little farther down is I don't know if you can tell there's an exclamation point, and and that's basically a warning that maybe this. You might want to double check your ID or whatever because this species hasn't been recorded from that area. But that means it hasn't been re there hasn't been a herbarium specimen collected from that particular area. Uh, so take that one with a grain of salt. Don't don't worry about it too much. And in fact, 
I found out that one of the species I had for one of my sites, uh, I identified it to variety and Don Kenoki had previously collected the same species, but only identified it to species. And mine came up with a with the flag as, as if it didn't occur, or it was you know unknown from that area, which basically means it's the only variety of that species that occurs. So we really need to go back and, and probably uh, annotate Don's herbarium specimen to indicate that that's that's what the variety is on it. Sarah Verlidi is pointing out today that there are a few lists in Oregon and Montana. You can use the Find on a Map tab and see the little pins when you scroll up. Don, could you look for that, please? Sarah, Sarah, how are you doing? Sarah's in, in Ritzville. Nice of you to join us. So let's see. So I want to go, let me figure this out how to, how I'm going to do this. Find on a Map tab. Well, look at that. Yeah, so let's see, let's see what's in Oregon here. Yeah, I, I can't explain that. Unless, oh, maybe there are WNPS trips that went, oh, I see Steens Mountain, yeah, some pretty famous places. I will say that there there is no limitation on where a list originates. If you remember and want to add a list, uh, the database will accommodate it. But our focus, of course, is is mostly in state. Yeah. And Sarah says she's great in Ritz Hill, and there are a few in the gorge, too. If you want to look a little bit north, you'll see. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. Hey, one thing about Sarah I should mention, since uh, since you're here, is Sarah noticed there weren't very many in Snohomish County when she lived in Bothell, and went out, and and she and. And some other uh, people went out and added some lists, which was terrific. John Haskins reports that he is the culprit of the Montana list. It's for the gravelly range, which is at the edge of the PNW floor coverage. Ah, it, does nice. it does report a lot of stuff as out of range. Okay. <laughs> That's right. It, it would show, right, it, would, it doesn't know that it's not in the political boundary of Washington. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Good questions. Well, actually, the outer range thing is based on, a, on uh, I think, a search area surrounding the point that, that was added for the map. And, and Ben Legler programmed it to look, I don't know, a couple kilometers away or, or a few miles away. I forget what the range was. So it searches a consortium of Pacific Northwest herbaria, not just you know, the UW uh, herbaria and sees if anybody's ever collected anything with that name uh, within a certain distance from that point. And Walter Fertig shares a comment today. Lots of state and federal protected areas like natural area preserves, state parks, wilderness areas, research natural areas, and others don't have good species lists. So I would encourage people to start lists for them, even if they are not complete. This information is really valuable for conservation planning and identifying gaps in species that are not protected. The WMPS Plant List Program is a great citizen science project for folks who would like to make that contribution. Well, great, thanks Walter. That's a terrific fodder for people who want to go out and make plant lists. That's great. Mary and Bailey asks, how would a list be checked for accuracy when uploaded? Uh, good question, because uh, it is, there isn't a, an accuracy check. There is that one, the exclamation point Ron pointed out that would, is kind of a flag that would tell you that something might be amiss or it might just be misspelled or, or it may not be known. But, uh, it would probably be the, the way it would turn up if, if a list came up that was had a lot of inaccuracy, somebody would probably point it out and, and probably uh, someone in that person's chapter might say, hey, let's go out and look at your list and, and see if we can clean it up a little bit. But yeah, we haven't had that problem yet. But on that subject though, there are inaccuracies in these lists. Occasionally things creep in that uh, a, a plant that you know somebody thought was one thing and it's not. 
And that's the beauty of being able to edit is you could go out and say, hey, you know, I think that plant rather than this is, is this other one and here's why. And then everybody learned something too. Very good. I, th um, I believe that wraps up our questions, unless anyone would like to post a last minute question. Yeah, and just uh, again, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. And Ron, thanks to you for, for helping with the questions. And again, if you are interested in becoming a contributor, you can contact Ron at plantlists at wnps.org. Or if you have questions about uh, plant lists in general or about anything I talked about, feel free to email me. I had my uh, WNPS email at the beginning. That's treasure at wnps.org. And, and feel free to contact me with any questions about plant lists. You know, it was great to have you all uh, uh, joining us today and fun to see uh, some old friends' names in there and, and also uh, to see lots of new people too. So, or to hear, see your names. We can't see you individually. So rest, re relax. Thanks so, everybody. Very good. So one last comment from Tim Schoenfelder. Thanks, Donna Broad. This was very useful. Thanks, Denise. These webinars have been wonderful. The golden question is, can I watch the recording? And the answer is yes. However, each of these recordings are being cleaned up prior to posting so that you have an effective start and finish time. So please note that they will be posted starting next week and the link will be on the homepage wnps.org as well as in the e-news on May 1st. So thank you all for attending today and I uh, look forward to seeing more plant lists and when we can all get back outside safely to enjoy the spaces we love. Thank you.